Hi there and welcome to my channel Decoupage DIY with Jo Marie Domino. I have put together a fun video. I'm going to show you how to make four different Halloween projects. These can be trick or treats. You could use them for decor. You can even put them on your tiered trays. I'm going to use things from the Dollar Tree, some things from Vippy's Designs and don't worry I'm going to take you step by step so even if you're a beginner you can do this. notebooks I got from the Dollar Tree. They come in packs of three. Now I'm going to paint the front first and I'm going to use a deeper color like this tan to be able to see that. So having something with a little bit of color is going to help. Now I'm going to put some on my plate and I am going to apply it with a sponge pouncer. You can see I'm not brushing it on. I think this is going to give me much better coverage. I'm going to go over the whole front and if I get a little bit on the binding that's okay because this is definitely something that's going to look old, vintage, and spooky. We're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back and do a second coat. The first coat is dry and now I'm ready to put a second coat on the front cover. Now I thought one coat might do it but no I really need to put that second coat on and I'm applying it with the sponge pouncher just like I did with the first coat. That looks very very good and then after you do that and it's dry you want to go ahead and put two coats of the same color on the back as well. Okay let's put that off to dry. So here's the napkin that I chose for the cover and I'm only going to need one square. She'll have three more. Instead of taking the napkin apart, which is what I usually do, I decided to do a tear with the plies attached. I liked it because it gave me more of a raggedy look, which is what I was going for because this is a spell book. I'm not really looking for it to blend in. So now I can just tear at it, lay it down on top of the book, until I have the right size. And again, I'm really looking for something that is raggedy and I really like how that looks. Now that I have the napkin torn to the size that I want, I'm ready to put it onto the top of the notebook. But first I need to separate the plies. So I only want to use that top printed layer. So a little bit of Mod Podge between my fingers and those other two layers come right off. All right, I'm gonna put it back down so you can see the the contrast, I guess is what I'm trying to say, between the white napkin and the brown cover. And now I'm going to put it on using some Mod Podge. Now I'm going to put the Mod Podge right on the cover of the little book. And then I'm going to take the napkin and I'm just going to flip it down and I'm going to continue to use my brush and put the Mod Podge not just on the cover of the book, but I'm also putting it right on top of the napkin. And I'll tell you, this is what makes this project not only really cute, but fun. I'm not being careful at all. As a matter of fact, I'm just having a lot of fun with this. I'm just laying down the Mod Podge underneath and on top. And I want it to be wrinkly and I want it to be bubbly because I want this to have a vintage look. Let's let that dry. This next step is so much fun. I'm using my Shore Bonder. This one has the fine tip. Now wait till you see this. All I'm doing is I'm tracing over the letters in this word. It says Witch's Brew. It's so easy for me to do because those words were already on the napkin. So I'm just following along with my glue gun. I'm going to wait for that to cool. And once it's cool, I'm going to go ahead and do the word brew. And then I'm going to outline the moon with the glue as well. Okay, I'm all done with the hot glue. I did all the letters. I went around the moon. I did some going down the spine. Then I just used some of the glue, the hot glue threads and strings. And I just went all over the front of the little book. Now I'm going to take my stamp pad, my memento stamp pad, and my new little sponge pouncer. I'm going to go around the edge of the front of the book and I'm also blending right on top of the napkin. I want to make this look a little bit more aged. I decided that I was going to do some stamp pad ink around the edge of the book, you know, where the pages are. Well, don't do that because the pages ended up sticking together. I'm now going to use one of my favorite products, which is the Gold Rub and Buff. I love this, but it is permanent, so you want to put it on with a glove. 
Now, all I'm doing is I'm taking this gold rub and buff and I'm lightly going over all the raised areas. So what I'm doing is I'm highlighting these areas. You can see the word witch better. I'm even going to go over all of the little strings of glue that are on the cover of the book as well. So I'm going to do a lot of highlighting with the gold. I think that this is a great project if you are a beginner because we're not looking for something that doesn't have any wrinkles or that blends perfectly together. We want something that looks vintage and because we're doing that with the way I'm applying things, it's also going to make it a lot more fun and a lot less anxiety. This is coming out really good. And honestly, I did not even prep one. This is my first one I did. That's why I'm saying this is a perfect project if you're a beginner. Okay, a quick review. Notebooks from the Dollar Tree, a cute napkin from Vippy's Designs, and Mod Podge. And here is the result. I love how this looks. I mean, it looks like it could have maybe potions and spells inside. And look at all the raised texture with the gold. To make the bookmark, I just used gauze and a little bit of Mod Podge to make it stiff. And now on to project number two. I got some bookmarks and some coaster squares from Vippy's Designs, but they are not going to be coasters. They're going to be refrigerator magnets. I also grabbed some of their napkins that are gonna work perfect on this project. I already put a coat of white linen chalky paint right on top of the wood square. Now comes the hard part. I have to pick out a napkin I'm going to use. So I went through all the things I got from Vippy's Designs and they had so many to choose from, but you know, you can use any napkin that you like. Ultimately, I did choose the cauldron, Hocus Pocus, and I'm going to only need one panel to do this project. Now I'm going to separate the napkin because with decoupage, we only use the top printed ply and I'm going to use Mod Podge. And here's my little tip that makes it so easy. A little bit of Mod Podge between the fingers, pinch up there in the corner and you can very easily remove those back plies and just put them off to the side. So now I'm going to put some Mod Podge on top of the wood square. So Mod Podge, that's what's in the container. And remember, I buy big containers and put them into small containers, but you could buy the small containers from the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna cover the whole thing. Now I'm going to apply the napkin right on top of the wet glue. Now this napkin, it doesn't fit exact, but it's okay. It's still going to look really good on this. All right, I'm just gonna use my fingers a little bit, but here's another tip. Take a plastic bag, this is an old plastic bag, and there's those extra plies from the napkin, and I'm just going to rub it really well. And by doing this, I'm removing all of the wrinkles. Okay, let me hold it up so you can take a look. Now that the glue is dry, I'm ready to remove that extra napkin that's hanging off the edge there. I'm going to be using my finger sander. I love this. That little piece of sandpaper, that can be replaced once the old one is no good. And you can start with a fresh new piece of sandpaper. Love this. I'm going to use a downward stroke and I'm going to go all the way around the edge of this wood blank. I'm calling it a coaster, but remember, it's not gonna be a coaster, it's going to be a magnet. But this little finger sander does such a great job. And you know what? I'm gonna throw you a curve. I decided I love this so much. I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more with different napkins that I got from Vippy's Designs. And I did it the same way, and I am removing the extra napkin also the same way with my finger sander. They really came out good. Now I'm ready to go on to my next step with these four little wooden squares. I'm going to be using my Cricut iron on this. There is the setting, the on and off button, and I am using the hottest setting on these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with the first one that I made, which is the cauldron and the hocus pocus. I'm putting on top what I'm working on, which is a silicone mat. It is heat resistant, so it's really good when you're doing the iron on. Um, I highly recommend it. I'm putting a piece of baking parchment on top and I'm going to run my iron over it really quickly. I'm gonna wait for it to cool, remove the parchment, 
and I'm going to hold it up so you can see the iron I made it really flat and it's going to adhere really well now. And I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same thing with the other three coasters, the one with the little dogs. I love all the Halloween words on that one. And the one, the kitten with the witch's hat is just so cute. And we just want to let them all cool before we remove the parchment. Now I'm ready to go on to the next step where I'm going to add a little bit more color and I'm going to do that with the Hocus Pocus one. Now I'm ready to add some color. I'm using my little sponge pouncer and that little top sponge can be replaced. I'm using a memento pad in dandelion. It's a deep yellow color. I'm going to take the pouncer. I'm just going to pounce right on top of the stamp pad. And after I do that, I'm just gonna test it really quick on the white paper plate, little tip there. Now I'm gonna to start to pounce around the cauldron. And now using a stamp pad to add color is something new I'm just playing around with now. And I love it because the color is sheer and you can layer. So in other words, with paint, you might get it to be too dark. With the stamp pad, you can really play and just continue to add layers. Now that I'm done adding color with the stamp pad, I wanna hold it up next to one that I did not add any color to yet. I love this little sponge pouncer. Those little sponges, you can change them. You can wash them and probably use them three or four times and you get a whole bunch of them um, when you buy the little pouncer set. Love working with it with the Memento stamp pads. Did such a great job. Now to add some sparkle, I'm gonna use one of my favorite products, the Mod Podge, it's the Extreme Glitter. So I'm gonna just roll it to mix it up really well. And then I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go over the entire front of this wood square and I'm gonna get lots and lots of sparkle from the Extreme Glitter. I'm gonna go over the whole thing and wait till you see how it looks. I want to hold this up now so you can see all of that sparkle. And you know what? It's not even dry yet. All of that white is going to disappear once it's dry and it's going to be all sparkly. On to the next step where I'm going to be using some puffy paint. And I'm going to put that into the cauldron, that green whatever it is inside. Always test your little paint bottles to make sure it doesn't squirt out in one big glob. And I'm going to go over where it is painted green right on top of the cauldron. I'm going to fill in the whole thing. Remember... Test to make sure it doesn't come out in one glob. Now, when you're doing projects like this, you can embellish as much as you want. And that's what I decided to do with this. Okay, let's take a look. I love the puffy paint. Check out all of that sparkle. All right, I decided I needed to do something around the edge of this little wood square. So I'm just using paint and a really small sponge pouncer. And I'm going to go all the way around and just add a little bit of a green border. I think it's just a nice little finishing touch. And of course, you know, I'm probably not done at this point anyway. <laughs> I think the border and the green puffy paint was um, a good idea to embellish these. All right, now I'm going to let all of that dry. I did a quick coat of green on the back just to finish it off because I am going to be putting on these little magnets because remember, this is going to go on the refrigerator. Refrigerator magnets, it's not going to be a coaster. Now, these magnets are very, very strong and you have to keep them separate, although like cling together. All right, how I'm going to attach them is with a little bit of hot glue and I'm using my Shore Bonder and I'm going to put one up in every corner. Um, that's definitely going to be enough. And I know these magnets, they look so small, but you have to trust me when I tell you that they are very, very strong. And I'm going to put the link below in case this is something you think you might want to try. I'm done putting the little magnets and I'm going to flip it over so you can see that I put one in each corner. And just when I thought I was done, I decided I have to add more sparkle. So I'm going to grab some of my Stickles glitter glue and it's in like a lime green. And I'm going to put that right on top of where I put the puffy paint. That's the special brew that's inside the cauldron. And that's going to give me a lot more glitter. This is going to be a really cute magnet. Now that it's dry, I'm ready to do something on top to protect it. And I'm going to use a Dora Clear Gloss Varnish. This is one of my favorite sealants. It's very low odor, and I really love how it works on projects. I'm just going to put a little bit there right on top, and I'm going to use my brush to just spread it out so I have a nice thin coat all the way across, and it's really going to pick up all the glitter and sparkle. This is a really fun project. I used some wood squares I got from Vippy's Designs and some of their really cute 
napkins, and of course, Mod Podge glue. There's the first one I did, Hocus Pocus, but look how I transformed it with stamp padding, puffy paint, and some glitter. Then I added some of these little magnets on the back. So now it's a really cute thing to give as a gift. Now I'm moving on to project number three, which is bookmarks, but they can also be uh, magnets. These are all the napkins that I pulled out from Vippy's designs, and some of them are just scraps. That's what I'm going to need on these little bookmarks. My bookmark is painted white, and now I'm ready to put the napkin on. And this is the first napkin that I chose, which I absolutely love because it's a complete pattern and nothing is cut off. Now I'm ready to remove the top printed ply of the napkin because we only use that top printed ply with Mod Podge and Decoupage. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to do that. A little glue between your fingers, pinch up there in the corner, and those back plies will easily come off and you'll have that top printed ply. I'm taking the Mod Podge and I'm going to apply it all the way across the bookmark. I'm going to adhere the napkin right on top of the wet glue. I'm just gonna put it down and get it in position. And once I have it where I want to, I'm gonna do a little smoothing with my finger, but I am gonna put the plastic bag on top and give it a good rub to make sure that all the wrinkles are gone. Now, after looking at this, I think, you know what? You could probably do two bookmarks with one of the panels. Let me hold it up so you can take a look. I'm having so much fun with these bookmarks. I decided to do a few more and I'm using the same technique as I did with the first one, adhering and using the plastic bag. With this napkin, you can do lots and lots. Cute gifts for trick-or-treaters. Got another adorable napkin, and this one has a really designer look to it. And I'm putting it on exactly the same way, smoothing with my fingers, and then, of course, putting the piece of plastic on top, making sure that it's well adhered. This napkin is so cute. Look, the trick-or-treat is backwards. I love that. And you know what? I still have room to do another one. And like the magnets I just made, I'm going to use my iron and I am going to do a quick iron on method just to make sure that these napkins are well adhered to the bookmarks. I went ahead and used the iron on method on the other two bookmarks as well. Did a really good job. I think this is my favorite. Okay, now I want to remove those edges and I'm going to use my little finger sander. And the same as I did with the magnets, I'm going to do a downward stroke and get rid of all of that extra napkin. But I can see I'm having a little problem here. As I'm doing this, I'm seeing that extra napkin isn't coming off as easily, but I use it for sanding a lot of things. So it's time for me to replace the little piece of sandpaper. And it's so easy. You get a whole bunch of these when you get the finger sander. And this is like Velcro. It's very easy to put right on top and I'm all ready to go with a fresh piece of sandpaper. Much better, that extra napkin's coming right off. Look at that nice clean edge. You know, this finger sander, I know you heard me say it, but it really does a good job, and it's very inexpensive, and it comes with tons of the little replacement sandpapers. Okay, all three are done, and now I'm ready to give it some extra sparkle, and I'm using the Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. I'm gonna roll it a little bit to mix up the glitter, and I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna put it on top of all three. Now, I love the Extreme Glitter because the glitter pieces are right inside the glue and I don't have to use the loose glitter because loose glitter, it does, you know, it kind of gets everywhere and onto the dogs and we don't like that. But the glitter is mixed right in there with the glue so it's only gonna go on the project and not all over me and the dogs. I wanna hold this up so that you can see that there is some white on there. That's the glue, you can see the glitter too, it's so pretty. But all that white, once it's dry, it's going to be clear and you'll only see the glitter. I decided to do a little bit more embellishing, so I found these little googly eyes, and I'm gonna put them right on top of where all the eyes are um, on this particular napkin design. So a little bit of hot glue where I decided to put the googly eyes, and then I'm going to use my fingers, and actually I'm going to use a tweezer because I don't want to get burnt like I'm doing there, and it's gonna make it much easier to get those googly eyes on. 
this project, this is really cute, something you can give to trick-or-treaters. And I think going that extra step by adding the little googly eyes really make them a special treat. I love how this came out with all the sparkle and the googly eyes. As an alternative to giving out candy, this would make a cute trick-or-treat um, just with some napkins, some Mod Podge, and of course the bookmarks, the blanks from Vippy's Designs. I love that one with the Goo Goo Eyes. So there they are. That's the pattern. That's the pumpkin one with the backwards trick-or-treat and the one with the googly eyes. And now I'm on to project number four, and I'm using these magnets I got from the Dollar Tree, but I'm going to transform them into another cute little trick-or-treat. I did one already. Here's the napkin with the little sugar skulls. I didn't even paint it. I put the napkin right on, but we are going to paint some. With the next three, I'm going to put on a coat of white chalky paint. I actually did that ahead of time. There it is, white linen chalky paint from rust -Oleum. And I did apply it with a sponge pouncer. Now, take a look at these napkins. Do they look familiar to you? I just used them for the bookmarks, but all I need are scraps to do these magnets. So I'm going to take some of my Mod Podge and I'm going to put it right on top. But of course, you want to put the napkin on first to make sure it's going to fit because it is kind of small. So I'm going to put the Mod Podge on top and then take the little piece of napkin. And I'm going to actually put Mod Podge right on top to smooth it. So I'm actually adhering it and I'm sealing it all at the same time. Now, do you recognize this napkin? This is the one I did the bookmark and I went ahead and added some Google Eyes on it as well. And I'm going to finish doing that one with the Mod Podge on top. Remember, I'm adhering and I'm sealing by doing that at the same time. And this is my last one. This had lots of prints on it. You could do tons and tons of magnets with this napkin. And I'm going to brush the Mod Podge again on the top. This is a fun project and great for trick-or-treaters. So those are the magnets I got from the Dollar Tree. And you get six in a package, making it very cost-friendly. There's a napkin that I used, and there's the little pumpkin. I only used one image, and I did add some of that extreme glitter from Mod Podge. Here's another one of the napkins that I used. That one had the Google eyes on, remember, from the bookmark. I added some sparkle on top. Another napkin has tons and tons of prints on it, so that means you can make tons and tons of magnets. These projects were so much fun. The first one I took some little notebooks I got from the Dollar Tree, a napkin from Vippy's Designs, and some Mod Podge, and I transformed them into this cute little spell book. And of course, you could write any little spells in there that you want. I used the gold rubbin book to highlight everything. My second project, I used some napkins from Vippy's Designs and some of their wood blank bookmarks. And I created these really fun and festive Halloween bookmarks that you can give as trick or treats. And remember, you can also put magnets on the back of these and they can go on the refrigerator. For my third Halloween project, I used some coaster blanks from Vippy's Designs and I used some of their really festive Halloween napkins. Now remember, these were not going to be coasters. Instead, I made them into magnets. That's the Hocus Pocus napkin that I used and I transformed it with colors from a stamp pad. That's a new technique and there are the little magnets I put on it so it can go up onto a refrigerator. This is another item that would be great for trick-or-treaters. You could give it to them alone or you can add it with some candy. And look at all that sparkle. Oh, I love it. And my fourth and final project is some magnets I got from the Dollar Tree. And I covered them with some little scraps of these napkins I got from Vippy's Designs. www.vippies.com. You can like and follow Vippy's on Facebook and on Instagram. If you like step-by-step -step instructions, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Decoupage DIY with Joe Marie Domino. Give me a thumbs up, drop a comment, and share with your friends. You can also like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. See you soon.